and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. When I was young, we used to play freeze tag all day, every day, over the summer. And it was everyone in the neighborhood, kids we knew, kids we didn't know, kids visiting their grandparents or cousins, and even kids that we may not have liked. Everybody in the neighborhood. And we all played together, and during freeze tag, at least once, each one of us would be tagged and frozen, sometimes more than once. And there you stood, just whatever position you were tagged in, you're frozen, and you cannot move until somebody comes to tag you and unfreeze you so that you can rejoin the game. And there was always that internal thought process of, who's going to come untag me? Who's going to come unfreeze me? Is it, is it going to be a friend? Oh, I hope it's not that person. Oh, but maybe it will be that person. But what if it's someone I really don't like? In our gospel today, a lawyer was trying to test Jesus a little bit by asking, what, is, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus wisely answers, what's the law say? Because when we're asked questions, go back to the Bible. What's the Bible say? What's the law say? And the lawyer answers, you shall love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, you've answered rightly. Go and do likewise. And the lawyer this sneaky little guy that he was, then asks, well, but Jesus, who's my neighbor? And here comes one of my favorite parables about the Good Samaritan. Now keep in mind, during this time frame, Jews and Samaritans did not play well together. In fact, one could say that they hated each other. Two weeks ago in our gospel, we heard how Jesus was not received by the Samaritans. And James and John, oh, the brothers of thunder, looked at Jesus and said, Do you want us to command fire down to consume them? So I think it's safe to say that these two groups didn't like each other. Now, Jesus' parable shows a man who was wounded, robbed, basically left for dead. And he was avoided by two people that walked by, a priest and a Levite. And yet the third, a Samaritan, was moved to compassion to offer aid. Imagine when Jesus tells this parable. Imagine the lawyer's exasperation that Jesus is telling a story about this group that he would not like. And then Jesus would say that the first two people that a Jewish lawyer would respect and admire didn't do anything. And here's this person that he didn't like that ended up being the neighbor. See, a neighbor isn't just the person next to us. It's not the person sitting next to us in the pew or in the car at a red light. It's not a childhood friend who seeks you out to unfreeze you during a game of tag. It's everyone all around us, regardless of our location. It's the child you don't like who comes to unfreeze you. And it's the person who I learned this past week that sets off fireworks three days early. And maybe three days late. A neighbor is the, willing, is the person who's willing to tell us hard truths. It's the one who's willing to speak unpopular words. Amos was that kind of neighbor. Amos was the neighbor who followed God's prompting. Who even, when called basically a conspiracy theorist, he stuck to the words that God gave him because God told him 
And Amos had difficult words to share. And not all those folks around him enjoyed his words, as we heard in our reading. He had a vision, and in that vision he saw a plumb line, which speaks to an uprightness of the judgment that God was levying against his people. Now, I'm not a handy person. I can glue. I had no idea what a plumb line was. Not a clue. So I had to Google it. And um, a plumb line is basically a weight, and I'm sure some folks know this, but it's a weight that's hung by a cord, and it's perfectly straight. And it is a way for builders to ensure that a structure is vertically aligned. Now, today we use a level, or for me, because technology is beautiful, I have an app for that, and it does all my work for me. <laughs> but in scripture, our plumb line, it's established as the rule against which Israel is to be judged, is to be measured. And that plumb line is the measure of holiness, God's righteous and holy standard. And that plumb line showed how Israel had failed to embody God's righteousness and holiness in their lives. For us, because we also live according to a plumb line, although because we live according to Jesus, there's a shift of that perspective of plumb line. And for us, it's, it's how we exhibit the fruits of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit are the character of God. And that plumb line for us is an encouragement. It gives us the tools and how we interact with each other. And how we treat each other. And how we relate to our neighbor. I read on Crosswalk.com, because I love that website, that the encouragement that a plumb line can give us as Christians comes from its ability not to tell us when we mess up, because I mess up all the time, and I'm sure we all have moments where we mess up. But a plumb line for us declares the vision for God's will in our lives. And when we live in that vision, we, we live in that faith, we live out Paul's letter to Colossians today. The plumb line is the measure that helps us know that, as Paul says, we are filled with the knowledge of God and his will in all spiritual and understanding. So we may lead, lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. And as we bear fruit in every good work, and as we grow in the knowledge of God, and I think it's worth it to say again, as we bear fruit in every good work, and as we grow in the knowledge of God. I don't know about you, but that's a plumb line I can get behind. I can support that and love it. As I look around this sanctuary, I see friends. I see family. And... When I walk out these doors today and encounter <laughs> who knows on the street, people that I may want to know and people that I really wish I could avoid, we struggle. But what we can trust as we aim and struggle with this plumb line, this goal, this character of God living, is that each person that we encounter is our neighbor. And while that lawyer was trying to trick Jesus, he asked a question we needed to hear. Who is our neighbor? And Jesus doesn't give the lawyer an easy answer. He doesn't give us an easy answer. And sometimes we don't want to hear the answer. Our neighbor is the one we were taught to hate. Our neighbor is the one that we don't understand. Our neighbor is the one with similar opinions. Our neighbor is the one with the opposite opinions. Our neighbor is the one we both expect 
and the one we least expect. Today, may we allow the plumb line to encourage and challenge us to love our neighbor and truly show the character of God. Amen.